cloud engineer or DevOps engineer? Which path should you take? So I get this question frequently from people who are saying, I don't want to combine cloud and DevOps. Why don't I just do cloud? Some other people would say, I don't need cloud. I'll just do DevOps engineer. So this video is going to show you the difference between the two and what would you take as a roadmap for this or that. And then we look at the overlap and I think you will laugh at the end. So if you have not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so now and activate notification to get a lot of videos that we are planning to publish. And if you like the video and benefit from that, please give us a like, consider sharing the video with others so we can benefit the masses and then also you will help that knowledge spread. I'll see you in a bit. So in another video that I have shared before, and I talked about the cloud skills that you would like to acquire or you need to acquire in order to work in cloud in general and why it is important. Also in a different video, I have also highlighted what are the modern IT skills away from the Network Plus, A Plus and CCNA and all that that you need to learn today in order to be equipped with the right skills in order to get into the modern IT. Now, if we are going to focus on cloud engineer job, and I always recommend getting into cloud through the engineering side, because that will give you a lot of understanding of what happens, how do things work, how you troubleshoot them and all that. So when you build solutions, you will know exactly and understand what works with what and what doesn't work, what is integrated out of the box, what needs integration and serverless and a lot of other things that when you touch it with your own hands, it makes a big difference than if you just pick the solutions architect associate, take the exam and try to break from the solutions architect side. Of course, this is if you are a fresher or switching into IT or you have no knowledge of the cloud. But if you have been in IT as a solution architect, do something else, then you can get from that path. So let's talk about the majority or the sheer of people getting into the cloud who are either freshers, they are new to IT or they are switching into IT. So cloud engineering will be your best bet in that case. So what would be a roadmap for the cloud engineer look like? So first thing, we need to get the modern IT required skills, the IT foundation, including what is cloud, what is DevOps, and what the networking fundamentals that you need. And in this video, I have highlighted and shared the exact knowledge that you need to know before getting into cloud from a networking perspective. And you do not need to do Network Plus, A Plus, and then CCNA. You don't need to do that. Watch this video to find out why. You need to get an introduction into the cloud. It could be AWS, could be Azure, depending on which one is more popular and which one is in higher demand in your country. You have to master the Linux basics. You don't need to be a master of everything in Linux unless if you would like to apply for a junior Linux administrator or systems administrator job in order to fund the rest of your learning. And this video will talk to you about the roadmap end to end. Then you need to learn scripting automation, and that should be through bash scripting and also Python automation, fundamentals of automation through Python, not, not backend development or anything. You need to know Git and GitHub. You need to understand Docker and Kubernetes and Terraform for infrastructure as code. Great. So once you do this, and of course, depending on the depth, if you are a fresher out of university applying to associate and internships, or fresher jobs, basically, then you need to know it like mid-level. You don't have to be an expert in everything of this. You just need to understand it very well, work on them, and do some projects so you understand how this functions, what are the features, how they are configured, and how it works, and how you can troubleshoot some problems through implementing projects. You did that, so this is the foundational skills, the critical skills that you need to know in modern IT irrespective of where you are headed afterwards. All right, but now we are talking about cloud engineering. So I have to be specific for whatever I'm going to add on top of this. And this is what I recommend from a certificates perspective that you do in conjunction with the fundamentals or the modern skills that you have built. These are the RHCSA, the CKA, and the Terraform Associate. So now we are a certified owners of the modern IT skills. 
but we are not yet shaped into a specialty or a specialization. In order to get into cloud engineering, here is what I recommend doing. You need to learn Ansible for sure. You need to be certified in one of the clouds. Why certified? First of all, it verifies that you have been certified by the vendor. Second thing is it gives you a broad exposure to a lot of services and also the chance to work with each one of them separately. And in some courses, they have also some hands-on projects, projects, not labs, that you can combine multiple services together and see how it works. If Azure was the right one or the one in higher demand in your country or region, then start with Azure. I would always recommend going multi-cloud. Learning the second cloud will never take the same effort as the first one. It could be only 50% of the effort, 60%, but it will never be times two or times three. If you have done Ansible and you have done RHCSA at this level, this certificate at the Linux level, then I would recommend considering that it had certified engineer. Now you are broadening your certification portfolio. You are showing the validation from the vendors of your knowledge and also, of course, equipped with your other interview skills and also the fact that you have done projects, your portfolio on GitHub and so on. So that would prepare you to be the cloud engineer or the sysops admin for Azure or for AWS. All of this. All right. So if you like to start as a cloud engineer, as a talented and skilled cloud engineer, this is what you need to do, of course, on top of the projects and on top of the communication skills and the soft skills and all that. And of course, the networking as well to get the opportunities and start applying for jobs and all that. So this is cloud engineering. If you would like to start like this, go ahead. What I always recommend to people who would like to focus on the cloud more is don't stop here because that is entry level to high entry level, lower mid level cloud engineer. You need to be higher than that to be protected from the AI impact. And this video I have explained why the freshers are the most susceptible to this AI impact. Watch it and it will give you a lot of insights. So what would you do? What would I recommend you doing in this case? I would recommend that take this upwards to two more things if you want to stick with cloud engineering. One is the security part. Do the security specialty and take your architect skills into the professional level. So basically become more skilled in the cloud provider, whether it is Azure or AWS into the solutions architect expert on Azure or the professional on AWS. And in either case, this is going to be a preparation for you to jump into the architect side, which is very safe from the AI impact. So that would be the right path if you'd like to go up. And of course, you need to know the AI features and the AI skills on this cloud provider, whether it is Azure or AWS. I always, when it comes to machine learning and AI, I prefer Azure and Google over AWS. All right, so this is if you would like to focus here. Now you are not a beginner anymore. If you take it to this level, you are not a beginner anymore. You understand security for the cloud provider. These are all deltas, by the way. So if you take it to this level and you'd like to get to the professional level, maybe another three weeks, four weeks. If you'd like to get the security specialty, after that, that will be another maybe two, three weeks. So we are not talking about doubling the period. We are talking about the fact that you would like to be highly qualified and highly exposed to the environment or the cloud provider that would like to apply for cloud engineering jobs in. And if you do this, then I wouldn't stop myself from also applying to the associate solution architects. If you're not coming from an architecture background, apply to the associate solution architect jobs because you don't have the architect skills, the architect brain muscle that listens to requirements, business requirements, and then translates them into technical requirements and solutions. You haven't been into the meetings to gather the requirements and ask the right questions. So you need to be at the associate level for a, for a while where you shadow or you partner with some more senior solutions architects. Six months, 12 months, you will be on your own. So this map, this is roughly about 12 months if you if you are putting two hours per day if you put in more hours you may bring it down to maybe 10 9 
And if you put in less hours, then it's going to be more than 12 months. All right. So I have seen people that are married with kids and with full time jobs, and they were able to do this in about 14, 15 months. All right. So this is cloud engineer. If you'd like to focus on this path, by all means, go ahead. Now, let's see the funny part. Let's see if you have reached this level or even this level, what would it take to become also into DevOps? Is it going to be the same effort, 50%, 30%? Let's look at the next slide. So same start, same modern IT skills, and same recommended certification. Now at this level, it's up to you. I would still recommend that you take these certificates because now you are an AWS DevOps engineer and you're going to become also an Azure DevOps engineer when you add on the right DevOps skills. One would look at it and say, okay, but this is exactly the same like the previous one. There it was cloud engineer, now it's DevOps engineer, but until now, I don't see any difference. And let's look at where the difference is and you will laugh. This is what it takes for you to become a DevOps engineer on top of the skills that we have discussed. Whether it is Jenkins, the most common one, now GitLab is gaining popularity, GitHub Actions is gaining popularity, Argo CD is gaining popularity. So I'm talking about a CI CD tool, a tool that will take the code from the time it is committed in GitHub until it is deployed in production. It develops the application, builds the application, tests the application, and then can stage the releases until they are deployed. So any one of these would suffice. It could be Jenkins to start, could be GitHub Actions to start. It makes more sense if you were doing Azure to start with GitHub Actions because you are in the Microsoft realm basically, but it can be GitLab, it can be any one of these. GitLab is gaining popularity because it's easier to learn compared to Jenkins. So any one of them, as long as you get the concepts and you understand what's a pipeline and how you can automate the pipeline steps or milestones, then learning the second tool and the third tool is going to be a matter of playing with the tool, maybe reading a little bit a week, 10 days, and then you, can, you are well aware of that tool and you can start using it in your work or in your job. So that's what it takes. And that's why I'm coupling DevOps with cloud engineering. So you want to be a DevOps engineer and cloud engineer, why don't you do this? Why don't you be able to apply throughout your learning to the Linux junior administrator jobs? Once you are done with this, you can apply for the cloud engineer, AWS and Azure. And once you are done with the DevOps or the CI CD, then you can apply for DevOps engineer, AWS DevOps engineer, and Azure DevOps engineer. So that's what I'm talking about. And that's why I recommend doing this. It's the Delta effort could be another, I don't know, a month, six weeks. Here is one thing that you need to keep in mind. The decision for a corporate to move to the cloud takes a lot of discussions and a lot of stakeholders. And it's a major decision to make because it involves migrating applications to the cloud. But the decision to automate what is already in the cloud, for example, or maybe on-premises, the decision to automate is easier because now we are going to automate something that we do day in and day out. Instead of the manual stuff we can do in development environment, try the automation. It works and it's very easy and it doesn't risk anything because it, it, it is the process of making the software or the application ready to be deployed. And that's why when someone tells me I will only do cloud, I would say if it is another four weeks, six weeks, why don't you also do the DevOps engineering? And why don't you widen the opportunities and the exposure and your understanding and value to the company as well? So this is why I would say cloud and DevOps engineering. All right, but this is going to make me a fresher or an associate DevOps engineer. And the video I talked to you about, about the AI impact on jobs, talks about the DevOps engineering tasks are going to be automated very soon in the future, maybe in the next one or two years. How can I move up to the mid-level or move up to even the senior level in order to keep myself away from this or from the risk? Then you can add monitoring and, and observability, Prometheus, Grafana, ELK, understand some logging tools, and then you take yourself to the site 
reliability engineering and the platform engineering roles that are more shiny than only a DevOps engineer and it shows your broad knowledge and you can be part not only of automating software processes and automating scripts and all that, but you will be now involved in application problems and incidents. You are going to be paged maybe or called in when they have something wrong with one of the applications. Same thing with the platform engineering. You are going to debug stuff in the infrastructure and find out what the problem is. Stuff that the AI is still not aware or not mature enough to do it. So this is what it takes. I would say both of them, eight weeks, 12 weeks, two, three months, extra effort, and you're going to have all of these covered. So I would do DevOps, SRE, platform engineering, and cloud. And it's all a Delta effort on top of the cloud engineering that you will do. Remember that if you do this and you still consider going up in your cloud certification, taking the professional architect and the expert architect from Azure and taking the security or DevSecOps in this case, then you are also going up. If you take security, by the way, DevSecOps covers the cloud security. So if you take the security, certificates and knowledge and practice, then that is halfway. So the securing the pipeline and securing the cloud infrastructure. So you have covered the cloud infrastructure. Now you need to learn the tools for testing and all that, how you can secure the software pipeline itself. So I hope the point is clear. And I hope that you understand the cloud engineer roadmap and the DevOps engineer roadmap. And both of them relate to what we have explained before in a separate video for the best cloud and DevOps roadmap. What if someone wanted to take it even further into MLOps and AIOps? So you have reached the SRE platform engineering. You don't need to get into architect architecture and you like the engineering side. So you wanted to take it even further into a sweeter spot that the AI will not impact for the next maybe seven, 10 years, which is MLOps and AIOps. So what would be the Delta effort? Again, you are going to spend, depending on the time you put in, it could be two, three months, or it could be six months, depending on the time and effort, and then you will be MLOps and AIOps ready. The most important two takeaway points here are cloud engineering and DevOps engineering, they have in common about 90% of the required skills. Invest in the extra 10% and open doors to yourself to do more engineering and automation jobs and site reliability and also platform engineering jobs. The second thing that we need to notice also is the foundational certificate and knowledge that are in common to most, if not all, the modern IT jobs that are related to engineering. All right, hopefully this was clear. So if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel, activate the notifications, and if you benefited from the video, give us a thumbs up and share the video with others so we benefit the masses. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.